So tonight, I thought it might be nice to put on a cup of tea and do an unboxing. And by that, I don't mean electronics or makeup. Um, instead, I thought we could take a look inside of these boxes, which contain the puppets and the props from the stop motion animated film, Llamas at the Laundromat. This first box is a laundry basket full of props from the film. The overall art direction for the props and sets was sort of a gestural realism. Things could be kind of wonky and sort of look hand-drawn, but they're also based in how the real object would look. Kind of like if you saw an object in the distance and you squinted your eyes. These five laundry baskets, or laundry carts, were made by Sarah Ball. Um, she made the basket part by, by cutting a wire mesh and folding it. These wheels are made from styrene, and they're positionable, and I could use them to wax the carts into place. There's several dis different sizes, which you'll see there are lots of different puppet sizes, but that also helped me uh, with an optical illusion called forced perspective, where I could use the larger basket to increase the sense of depth on the set. And make the space look bigger than it was. Sarah painted this um, laundry basket for the live action shots, and then she made this tiny little basket to match that the puppet could hold. She made this basket out of a um, spray paint can lid, which I thought was just clever and resourceful, and it looked really good on camera. There were some shots in the film uh, where we needed to see like an actual washing machine or places around a house that were in, the clo in close up, and I really wanted to avoid making too many props um, that we would only use once. So I made this um, foam hoof that um, matched the proportions of the puppets and I used the socks. This is the same sock material that the puppets are made from. Um, this green one is a white sock that we colored green and then you can kind of see the, the hoof was <laughs> colored with black sharpie and kind of got all over everything. Um, and then this sock was made by Tara Perry who made the costumes for the film and we used it in the dresser drawer shot. These next two boxes are uh, full of the background puppets. I took about two to three months and sort of just made these puppets in an assembly line fashion. Looks like they've lost all of their pupils, so I'll make some more and show the process. The pupils were all made from black paper using these sharpened metal tubes to cut out different sized circles to match the puppets. And I, I am using a dull exacto blade here, kind of like using a butter knife. These are the size of pupils that the llamas had, and I think they look too small for this character. So I'll put on some larger ones and you can see how much it changes the personality. The pupils were held on with wax for most of the background puppets because they didn't move very much, and usually Vaseline on the llamas, so they had a little bit more movability. The background puppets are made out of a combination of insulation, foam insulation, um, you know, furniture foam, um, aluminum wire. This guy has a removable head. I think he's the only puppet with a removable head. Um, they all have clay. Their eyes are made of clay. And you can see the interior of this guy. He's this. Basically, I tried to make as much as possible, um, you try and make the shapes of them hard, 
with just the motion, with just enough um, area for them to be able to move around. This is the loris. The ladybug is sort of a fun design. She's basically a big solid bell. Uh, her legs are on wires and they'll move around. Um, and um, yeah, she does. She didn't do too much, um, but she can stand and um, and her head is held. Um, her head is a string. It's held on by a string, so you can really move it all around. It's it's got a bit of wax on it now, so it's not as. But she's kind of like a toy almost. Um, you can see really well with the loon, um, I used socks for a lot of their clothing and also for their, you know, this guy's feathers. Um, and they were really made to do what they had to do. The llamas, you'll see, had to be completely covered in fur because I didn't know what their outfits would be. But since I knew what these guys were going to be wearing, I could just make them the, I could just make their fur cover what it needed to. This baby lizard didn't have tie downs and his head is very heavy, it's all clay. Um, but he, he had a heavy tail and he basically just stood like a tripod. Also in these boxes are the eyelids. Um, the eyelids were made by Megan Hitler. I cannot remember the material that she used, but she formed them with a heat gun directly to the eyes of the puppets, um, which was great because the eyes are all handmade. Um, and uh, I'll have to put the material in the description. Um, and they just fit to the puppet. And um, I give them a good personality. The, these are a bit, a bit larger than your average stop motion puppets. Um, they're, they, they got to be that size because of uh, what Tara needed for the clothing for the llamas. So I knew the llamas were a certain size and then I used a document just laying them all out. Um, then I made these mock-ups and I used the mock-ups to um, in the photomatic to also decide which, which characters would be in which scenes so I knew how much they would get used. These next boxes have um, all of the llama ingredients. Um, how that process started was I gave Philip Edels these uh, scale drawings and he made these pattern pieces um, to figure out how they would be in 3D. And then we made these mock-up um, puppets, which we gave, to, we gave one set to Tara to make the clothes and I used another set for the photomatic. A photomatic is a, um, it's sort of a cross between a storyboard and an animatic and a block. Um, you can do like minimal amounts of animation, um, but you can also just figure out your framing. Um, and when you're working in stop motion, so much of, th so many things change when you go 3D. Sometimes it's nice to get physical as soon as possible and not always be working from storyboards. So here are the two uh, llama puppets. Um, these are two um, arms that were used in a close-up shot uh, where the puppet couldn't fit. And you can see that we could pin things to them and also slice, um, they were made of foam, so we could slice the foam and they could hold props. So the llamas are, uh, have two alumina blocks in them and then these wires run through the alumina blocks, one for the spine, two for the arms, and two for the legs. And you can see the holes on the back, which I'll show again. Um, and basically we take these replacement parts, um, it's a leg and that's a, an arm, and you cut them to the size 
So say an arm would break, you'd take the arm out, um, which you'd basically pull out of the um, pull out of the green like it's a like a shirt, um, and you would cut it to size, and then you would reinsert it. The heads are held on with brass stock, and this is just a we can look a little closer at the um, the holes for the set screws. So that's what's holding the wires of the arms and legs and spine together. So and you can see that the legs are wrapped in foam. The ears were also replaceable. Um, we didn't animate with them very much, so they didn't break, but they were replaceable. This box held the eyelids and some extra eyeballs for the puppets. They're made out of clay and they're lined in felt. Um, it was important to have a, like a dark line. Um, I really wanted all the puppets to sort of look like drawings that came to life. So the, the dark Sharpie line around the eyes was, was important. The eyelids were all made from uh, vacuum forming over the eye shapes. For moving the head around, um, the, the head is made out of a blue industrial foam and then there's a clay, the clay nose is inserted and that made the head nice to grab and animate. And these are the armatures that are inside the ears. Oh, and also I found in this box um, this awesome ruler. Um, one of the first shots of the film was by Anna and she used this ruler to keep track of the steps that the uh, llamas were going in. <laughs> I like that she named them. Um. So to give an overall sense of scale, uh, roughly the same amount of time that I spent working on the background puppets is how long Philip Edels spent uh, making these two llamas. And that's because they're just a much more detailed build. They needed to be in close up. They were in every shot they had to move around a lot. So we knew that they would break throughout the course of filming and we had to be able to fix them and keep them looking like new. These are the last boxes of the puppets and the props. There is one more box that has all of the costumes in it that Tara made. There were over 20 outfits that the llamas wore. So that will be fun to go through in a different video. You can find out more about the project and the book that is based on the film at pony.productions, the website, or pony.productions.insta, which is the Instagram account. Let me know if you have any questions, and thank you for watching.